Today, when many people seem so polarized and divisive, the value of forgiveness is more important than ever. This virtue is considered essential for emotional maturity and for spiritual growth. Properly understood, to forgive is not to excuse or pardon those who have committed harmful deeds. Forgiveness is for your sake. It's meant to free you from anger, resentment, and other painful emotions that can linger long after you've been hurt. When you're freed from the crippling burden of those negative emotions, not only will your life be better, but you'll have a much more positive influence on the lives of others. People often ask, should you forgive those who continue to hurt you, those who persist in harmful behavior? You might have found yourself stuck in such a situation where you're subjected again and again to some kind of physical, emotional, or financial harm. No one wants to be hurt like that. At the conclusion of this presentation, you'll find a good answer to that difficult question. Those on the path of spiritual growth want more than to merely avoid getting hurt. They want to be free from anger, sadness, and resentment because such emotions are huge obstacles to spiritual growth. As they say, you can't strive for the heavens when you're stuck wallowing in the world. A solution to this problem is found in a remarkable episode from the great epic Mahabharata. In its third book, the Vanaparva, Prince Yudhishthira gets into a huge argument with his wife, Draupadi. They argue about whether or not you should forgive someone who continues to hurt you. Let me set the context first and then share with you some passages I've translated from the original Sanskrit text. For decades, two clans viciously fought over who would rule a vast kingdom with its capital in Hastinapura. Yudhishthira was the eldest of the Pandava clan, and he was supposed to ascend to the throne. But the eldest of the Kaurava clan, Duryodhana, desperately wanted to become the next king. Duryodhana's uncle arranged a rigged dice game in which Yudhishthira was deviously cheated out of the kingdom. He was sent into exile for twelve years along with his four brothers and his wife, Draupadi. They were evicted from their royal quarters and banished to the forest, where they dwelled in a crude hut, dressing in deerskins and living on whatever fruit, seeds, and roots they could find. In the meanwhile, Duryodhana moved into the palace and enjoyed a life of luxury. In the midst of this terrible misfortune, Yudhishthira remained surprisingly calm. Draupadi, on the other hand, was deeply troubled. After suffering in the forest for many months, she broke down and bitterly complained to Yudhishthira. That cruel, evil-minded Duryodhana banished us to the forest, and now, while we suffer great hardships, he shamelessly rejoices in the palace. You used to sit on a jewel-studded throne, but now you sit on the ground. You used to dress in costly silks and sandal paste, but now you wear deerskins and you're soiled with dirt. Why don't you feel angry? 
when you see your brother suffering here in the forest, why don't you get angry? And when you see me, your wife, in this wretched condition, why don't you get angry? A Kshatriya warrior like you is supposed to be bold. This is not the time for forgiveness. It's the time to boldly strike your enemies. After being unfairly exiled from the kingdom, Draupadi seems to want revenge. She wants her husband to rise up in anger and put an end to this injustice so she can return to the palace and enjoy its comforts. Draupadi can't understand how Yudhishthira can remain so peaceful in the midst of this tragedy. But in the first book of the Mahabharata, Yudhishthira's biological father was revealed to be the god Yama, who is also known as Dharmaraja, the king of Dharma, righteousness. From his father, Yudhishthira inherited an unshakable commitment to follow Dharma at all times. The main principle of Dharma is ahimsa, non-injury, the path of least harm. Because of that, Yudhishthira considered any expression of anger to be adharmic, because anger leads to harm. According to Yudhishthira, even so-called righteous anger ultimately causes more harm than good. He explains all this to Draupadi in the next chapter. After Draupadi urged her husband to rise up in anger and put an end to their unjust banishment, Yudhishthira remained unmoved, firmly committed to follow Dharma. He told her, One who overcomes anger thrives, but one who fails to overcome anger gets destroyed. Anger is the root cause of destruction. An angry person cannot discern what should or shouldn't be said or done. An angry person can kill the innocent and praise vile murderers. That's why the wise control their anger. Because I understand this so clearly, anger never arises in me. Yudhishthira knows very well that anger can rob you of your self-control. Anger can overpower your judgment, leading you to make unwise decisions and take wrong actions. When you act out of anger, you can end up making a bad situation much worse. Your efforts will be much more effective if they're born of careful reasoning rather than blind rage. Later, Yudhishthira says that a wise person who controls his anger has immense tejas, brilliance, energy, and power. Seeing his tejas, others will naturally respect him and grant him authority. The ignorant, on the other hand, often confuse the energy of tejas with the might of anger. Instead of commanding authority and respect, they use anger to intimidate others into submission. That strategy often has terrible consequences. At the end of the chapter, Yudhishthira concludes, Those who are righteous always avoid anger. If the oppressed were to oppress others, if the hurt were to hurt others, if husbands were to beat their wives and wives were to beat their husbands, then there would be no peace in the world and all would perish. But a wise man, a man of strength and dignity, can control his anger even when he is insulted, wronged, or abused. Duryodhana can't tolerate such things, but I can. So, I will follow this path, 
the path of forgiveness and compassion, the path of eternal dharma. According to the Mahabharata, dharma is not based on scriptural rules that enjoin or prohibit certain deeds. Nor is dharma based on your conscience, your inborn sense of right and wrong. In several places, the Mahabharata defines dharma with the words ahimsa paramo dharmaha. The greatest dharma is to avoid causing harm. Elsewhere in the epic, the greatest dharma is instead said to be compassion. Ahimsa and compassion are like two sides of a coin. They're expressions of the same virtue. But here, Yudhishthira says that dharma is forgiveness and compassion. Why? Because forgiveness is the key to avoiding anger. Anger that leads to harm. Anger that's an obstacle to compassion. At the very beginning of the next chapter, Draupadi stridently vents her anger at Yudhishthira. She shouts, Nothing is more dear to you than dharma. You worked for dharma. You lived for dharma. And one who follows dharma is supposed to be protected by dharma. But dharma didn't protect you. You fell prey to gambling and were cheated out of everything. Your kingdom, your wealth, your brothers, and even me. How could you do that to us? Draupadi was deeply hurt. Someone who feels such hurt is likely to lash out in anger and hurt others. Here, Draupadi ridicules Yudhishthira's lifelong commitment to dharma, calling it useless. She blames him for being exiled from the kingdom and for their miserable lives in the forest. Then, quite unexpectedly, Draupadi shifts the target of her blame. She now accuses Ishvara, God, of being ultimately responsible for their terrible misfortune. She boldly says, Whatever pain or pleasure we get in life is determined by God alone. No one has control over happiness and suffering. We're all like little wooden puppets in the hands of God. We have to follow his commands like a bull led by a rope through its nose. God plays with us like toys, without caring for us like a mother or father would. Why did God give the kingdom to Duryodhana? How could he favor someone who's so evil and cruel? God seems to be as fickle as anyone else in the world. Not only does Draupadi feel deeply hurt, but she also feels victimized. After all, she did nothing to bring about this terrible misfortune. Like so many people, she struggles with the question, Why me? I'm a good person, so why did this happen to me? She wants to find the cause for her suffering, and she looks for someone to blame. First, she blames her husband. But since Yudhishthira is righteous and saintly, she ends up shifting the blame to God, and she sarcastically suggests that her husband is merely a puppet in God's hands. Like Draupadi, many people want to blame someone or something for their suffering. Unfortunately, as long as they continue to blame others, as long as they hold on to their anger and resentment, they will never find forgiveness in their hearts. And forgiveness is the key to emotional healing, 
the key to freeing yourself from feeling hurt or victimized. But how can you possibly forgive those who have deliberately hurt you and might even continue to hurt you? In such situations, forgiveness depends on understanding and acceptance, a complete all-embracing acceptance that arises when you thoroughly understand the nature of your personal karma. In the next chapter, Yudhishthira tells Draupadi how to understand her karma and how to gracefully accept the difficulties of their 12-year exile. When Draupadi blamed Ishvara, God, for all her troubles, Yudhishthira saw how deeply disturbed she was. And he said, O Draupadi, please understand who Ishvara truly is. Don't blame him for your suffering. Yudhishthira explained to Draupadi that Ishvara is the karma pala data the almighty, omniscient being who gives you the results of your own deeds according to the laws of karma. For all the good deeds you committed, either earlier in this life or in prior lives, Ishvara gives you desirable results, results that make you happy. And likewise, for all your harmful deeds, Ishvara gives you undesirable results results that make you suffer. In this way, Ishvara is not directly and solely responsible for your happiness or suffering. Ishvara only gives you, in accordance with the laws of karma, the results of deeds that you yourself committed in the past. It's true that you have no choice over the so-called good and bad karmas that will affect you in this lifetime nor can you know those karmas in advance. The ways of karma are unfathomable, as Sri Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Yet, the doctrine of karma can help you understand how and why unforeseen events happen in your life, events that sometimes bring happiness and sometimes suffering. Let me add something here. We all make mistakes. None of us is perfect. At one time or another, we have all caused harm to others, both in this life and in our prior lives. According to the doctrine of karma, because of harmful deeds we committed in past lives, we are all subject to being hurt by others in this life, no matter how saintly we might be. With this insight, you can answer the question, why me? Due to past karma, you will certainly undergo undeserved suffering in this life. Every single person is subject to such suffering. So, instead of asking, why me? You could instead ask, why not me? Am I so special that I should somehow be exempt from the laws of karma and never undergo undeserved suffering like everyone else does? By fully understanding the doctrine of karma, you can learn how to gracefully accept all the unexpected difficulties and tragedies that arise in your life. You can learn what Yudhishthira understood so well, that due to karma, suffering is inevitable. So, there's no one to blame and no reason for anger or resentment. With this wisdom, you can be as calm and peaceful as Yudhishthira, even in the midst of a disaster. Here, Yudhishthira didn't bother to give Draupadi a detailed explanation of the doctrine of karma. Why not? Because she already understood it. In the next chapter, 
Draupadi describes that as a little girl, a great scholar visited her home and taught the doctrine of karma to her father. While sitting in her father's lap, she listened carefully and learned it well. But then, if Draupadi already understood the doctrine of karma, then why did she get so angry about being evicted from the palace and banished to the forest? Why did she bitterly blame Duryodhana, Yudhishthira, and even Ishvara for her suffering? Well, Draupadi later admitted to her husband, I didn't mean to blame God. How could I condemn the great Lord of all beings? The fact is, I was overcome by grief, and that made me jabber senselessly. Apparently, Draupadi's intellectual grasp of the doctrine of karma wasn't able to soothe her troubled emotions. This is an excellent example of the so-called gap between your head and heart, a break in the connection between your intellect and emotions. Even when you fully accept the fact that you've suffered due to karma, at first, you might still feel angry and blame others for your misery because it takes time for the wisdom in your mind to sink down, so to speak, into your heart. Fortunately, anger and resentment will gradually fade away as your understanding of karma grows deeper and helps heal the hurt that lingers in your heart. Forgiveness is a process. Initially, you might be filled with anger, hurt, and resentment. Then you can reflect on how your suffering is a result of harmful deeds you committed in prior lives and the fact that, like everyone else, you are subject to undeserved suffering in this life. Because of the gap between your head and heart, it will take time for that understanding to sink in. But gradually, that wisdom will penetrate your heart and help heal your emotional wounds, allowing you to let go of any remaining anger, hurt, or resentment. Then you can remain as calm and peaceful as Yudhishthira, before we conclude, let's return to the question raised at the beginning of this presentation. Should you forgive those who continue to hurt you? The answer, of course, is yes. But that certainly doesn't mean that you should allow them to continue hurting you. You have a responsibility to protect yourself from harm. That, too, is dharma. In the Mahabharata, even though Yudhishthira felt no anger or resentment towards Duryodhana, he later assembled a huge army and defeated the Kauravas in war. That war resulted in Duryodhana's death and in Yudhishthira and Draupadi's return to the palace. Mm -hmm.